India has created history. India's Chandrayaan-3 has made history by being the first spacecraft to successfully make a soft landing near the moon's South Pole. Of course, a remarkable feat here. Chandrayaan-3's success has made India just the fourth nation to land a craft on the moon. It's a humble mission by the Indian Space Research Organization that's left the world awestruck. The success of the mission has put the spotlight on India's space agency, ISRO, and the cost efficiency with which it pursues its space exploration missions. Now, space missions are expensive, of course, of course, but it has cost India lesser to put a spacecraft on the moon than it cost to make the science fiction film Interstellar. Did you know this, Rahisha? Imagine. Now, India managed to land a craft on the moon with a $75 million budget, whereas it cost $165 million to make Interstellar. Right. SpaceX founder Elon Musk reacted to a social media post that mentioned this very fact and complimented India's marvelous feat. Many nations are attempting to land a craft on the moon with budgets twice the size of Chandrayaan-3. Now, Chandrayaan-3 had a budget of $75 million. Japanese company iSpace Inc. was the first to attempt a moon landing in 2023. Right, and reports say that the Hakutu R mission cost the company over $200 million. It is also the first company to attempt a private moon landing. However, the lander's control descent ceased and it reportedly crashed into the moon's surface. Meanwhile, we were also tracking the other news regarding how, how Russia's Lunar 25 mission, which ended in failure a little over a week ago, had a budget of $200 million. Now, in 2019, Israel, too, attempted to land on the moon for the very first time to total cost of Israeli mission. The cost here was $100 million. Even Chandrayaan 2 cost India $96.5 million. That's $20 million more than Chandrayaan 3. So basically, ISRO not only learned from the previous mission's mistake, it has also learned to succeed with a much lesser budget. Absolutely, Reisha. Now, Russian space agency Roscosmos also tweeted a congratulatory message. The statement was accompanied by a waving animation of Russia's Luna 25 lunar lander, which had earlier crashed on the surface of the moon. The statement stressed on how lunar exploration was important <coughs> for the whole of mankind. And we've seen him since yesterday how congratulations also poured in from across the globe. US, UK, Israel and many other nations tweeted their wishes to India and ISRO. The Vikram lander's next mission has also begun. This is a historic journey to assess the south pole of the lunar surface. ISRO has shared first images after the landing. The image shows a portion of Chandrayaan 3's landing site. One of Vikram Lander's legs and its a company, Shadow, as well. A name like we've been talking about how India has landed on the moon and Indians are over the moon. Of course. Now with Chandrayaan-3 mission success, India has become the first country to land a spacecraft near the moon's south pole as we mentioned earlier. Now this is seen as a giant leap in lunar exploration and India standing as a space power. And the country is rejoicing in a wave of admiration. the fourth nation to land on the moon after the United States, China and Russia. Prime Minister Narendra Modi hailed the day as a historic and unforgettable one. This is a great day. संखनाद का है ये छा नए भारत के जयगोष का है 
The historic fate has also garnered reactions from all around the globe. Russian President Vladimir Putin has also called the moon landing an impressive achievement. This comes days after Moscow's own mission, that was the Luna 25, crashed on the moon. Meanwhile, NASA administrator and also the UK Space Agency have welcomed India to the lunar family. Amid the ongoing BRICS summit, South African President Ramaphosa has said that the group is rejoicing with the fellow member. Nepal's Prime Minister Pushpa Kamaldahl has also congratulated India on this historic achievement. And with this triumph, the Indian Space Research Organization has entered the elite club of moon explorers. With prayers answered and a billion hearts swelling with pride for ISRO, the journey has just begun. Sir, we have achieved soft landing on the moon. India is on the moon. Let us all wait to hear from the Secretary, Department of Space and Chairman ISRO, and for more on this, uh, we now have with us Professor Narendra Bhandari, who is a space scientist of Chandrayaan first mission of ISRO. Thank you so much for joining us on Beyond, sir. Right, so what can you tell us about the position of the Vikram lander? Right, Professor Bandari was amongst the first group of scientists who worked on the USA's Apollo moon samples and also USSR's lunar moon dust brought back from the moon. He was also a member of the Moon Mission Task Force and the Science Advisory Board of Chandrayaan 1 of ISRO. Now, India's Chandrayaan 3 has made history by being the first spacecraft to successfully make a soft landing near the moon's south pole. Chandrayaan 3's success has made India just the fourth nation to land a craft on the moon. Right, sir, I believe there was a slight issue with the line there. I hope you can hear me now. We were asking you what's the current status of the Vikram lander and when can we expect the deployment of the Pragyan rover? You see that uh, it was a picture perfect landing and that 20 minutes of terror is behind us we are looking for the very exciting signs <coughs> in the next 14 days uh, everything on the two instruments lander and the rover are in good health they have been tested and they are in communication with the the orbiter of chandrayaan 2 so everything is working perfectly now already the ramp is out uh, we waited for some time for the dust to settle. You know, lunar uh, surface is full of dust, we call regolith. And as it landed, there was a lot of dust around that has settled down now. And the ramp has been uh, extended. And the Pragyan is uh, ready to come out and survey the uh, area near the lander. Uh, I think cameras are working. They already sent the pictures. Uh, they look perfect. And uh, now we have many instruments uh, on the lander and many instruments on the rover. And uh, we are planning to have all this data so that next time if somebody decides to have a base near the South Pole, then this will be the right, right thing to do. Right, sir. It was absolutely a feather-like landing that we all have been talking about here. Now that the Chandrayaan has landed, what happens next? Also shed some light on what kind of data is expected once the rover is deployed. First of all, we have a thermal profiler, a plasma uh, uh, instrument to see what plasma is coming from the sun. Keep you see, uh, lunar dust is charged because uh, particles from the sun uh, come and strike it. There is no atmosphere. So uh, we want to know all these conditions. Uh, then, of course, there is a seismograph. And, uh, you know, there is a lot of talk about whether lunar distance has been changing over time, uh, maybe a few centimeters every year. 
So for that, we have this American instrument of retro reflector. So these uh, four or five experiments will be done. And simultaneously, uh, we will study the chemistry, what are the elements present there, and uh, the minerals. What are the minerals present in lunar soil? Because every area of the moon is different and this is unexplored. So any further work, you know, uh, uh, Chandrayaan 1, as you remember, found for the first time water there. All Apollo samples and uh, the Russian samples did not show any trace of water in their samples because they were from the equatorial region. That's why on Chandrayaan 1, we decided to go and look for water at the poles. And surely enough, all our instruments, there are four in all, found water or traces of water there. Uh, this is in frozen uh, condition because uh, temperature is very low. All the water from the moon goes there and gets uh, deposited. And that is why there is much interest in the uh, South Pole region and North Pole region. Uh, billions of right. tons of water lay buried there. Right. Well, Professor Bandari, thank you so much for joining us on the show with your insights on this. Okay. It has been a pleasure.